Hello, West Radically. This is your Superintendent Aaron Johnson with a fresh batch of updates. Today is May 21st. Uh, it's the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. And the purpose of today's update is to keep everybody connected and make sure that you're staying informed. So my goal today is to give this information five minutes or less, very succinct and to the point. Let's launch it and see how it goes. So the first update today, I'd like to give a shout out to our food service staff. As you can see by this picture, they continue to stay hard at work every day making lunches and breakfasts for our students. If you have a child between the ages of three and 18 and you have yet to take advantage of that, all students are eligible, all children between those ages are eligible. And you can find the locations on our website if you look that up. As you can see today, students are gonna receive a BLT wrap uh, for today's lunch, along with a breakfast for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're gonna be providing lunches for not only Friday, but also Monday when we're closed. So please stop over there and take advantage of that. Wanna thank the ladies and gentlemen that are over there working very hard at this point. Since starting the meals in early March, they've delivered almost 20,000 meals, including the breakfast and lunches, to students across the district since school closed. So big round of applause to those folks. Thank you for everything you're doing for our students and families. We really appreciate you. So next I wanna talk about some of the updates regarding or uh, related to closing out the 2019-20 school year. <clears throat> As you can see here, here's some questions that I've been receiving from both faculty and staff and parents from across the district. First, I just wanna talk a little bit about unpausing facilities. So I've had some questions about that, most recently regarding the tennis courts and some around the turf. So if you watch the governor, part of his first phase of the unpausing of the Finger Lakes was to allow for outdoor recreation, such as the use of tennis courts. So with that, we are gonna reopen our tennis courts on Tuesday, the Tuesday after Memorial Day. So those will be available for people to use, uh, adhering to the proper social distance. The turf, we will wait on. Uh, of course, the community has access to our track and grass field at this point. People are using that appropriately. They're staying socially distanced. We will watch the guidance that comes out from the state and the governor. My hope is to open the turf at some point in phase two or phase three, working with our Board of Education and our operations team and making sure that we're providing that as a resource to the community as long as people continue to use that responsibly and keep their social distance. Some folks have asked me about events and activities. At this point, our building principals working with their staff have gone through all of their major events and activities for the year. They've talked about which events are considered milestone or cornerstone events and activities for that grade level or that building. Those are ones that we're trying to honor or do, or do our best to make sure that we provide those to students and families in some form or fashion. So they do have a list of those. They really had three options with activities. Number one, uh, cancel. Number two, postpone if they could. And number three, find a way to do it virtually or a way that we could do it underneath the uh, current guidelines from the governor. So we're putting together a fresh list of those activities now that we've made those decisions that will be posted very soon to our website most the most frequently asked questions around graduation we do have a date working with miss zip mclaughlin and her team <coughs> excuse me and our board of education and we are going to have that in late june more information will be coming very soon to the families and uh, to the uh, to the students those seniors appreciate everything that they're doing to stick with it and close out this year as best they can. Materials and belongings. <clears throat> Some students do have materials that are still in their lockers or in their cubbies in the smaller, uh, lower grades. Our uh, emergency management team, which is a group of uh, staff from across the district and leaders are working on plans within the next two weeks to allow students to come in at the upper grade levels and clean out their lockers within a, a certain time window and making sure that they're doing that safely, uh, wearing a mask, staying socially distanced, turning in, the, turning in their textbooks. At the lower grades, we're working on some plans to bag up the materials for the students and allow parents to come in and pick those things up. Some more information to come. 
but that should happen in the next two weeks. If you have any specific questions, please reach out to your uh, child's building principal. One-to-one -one technology, we've been going back and forth. Some folks would like to keep those in the hands of the students over the summer. We do have to make repairs, uh, clean those, those devices, and provide updates to those that we haven't been able to provide remotely. So we will be collecting those back on a rolling basis. And we're going to try to get some of those devices, depending on the grade level, back in the hands of the students to use over the summer uh, to uh, enhance their learning or to continue learning. Again, more information will be coming to you around that. That's being led by the building principals and our director of technology, Mr. Dan Fullerton. So and his team, I just want to uh, send out a shout out to them and, and appreciate all the work that they're doing to make sure that our students and staff have access to uh, the internet and their materials as we're working remotely. And last, <clears throat> I just want to give a little information on the last day of school. Uh, I've been feeling this question from families and staff. What we do know is per the executive order, we had to provide remote learning over school breaks. So that was spring break and then tomorrow, the Friday of Memorial Day weekend. And so students have been given materials to do remotely uh, and to continue their learning. Of course, during the week, they can work at their own pace. And if they choose to get all that work done and have a day off on Friday, let's say tomorrow, then that's their, under their purview. They can choose to do that. Uh, but we do consider tomorrow a day of learning. With that, if you count up the days, we did provide remote learning and our students continue to um, engage in that over those six days. So if you do the math, I can't give you a specific date yet because that has not been approved by the Board of Education. Um, but if you do the math and you count back six days from when school was supposed to end, that works out to be one of the days uh, in June, the week of the 15th. So that will most likely be the last day for students and staff that calendar is going to go to the Board of Education on June 4th, and we will make sure that we communicate that out very quickly to our families and staff on the 5th. So there may be some, some schools in the area that are announcing that a little sooner, and the reason for that is they have board meetings that are between now and then, and our next board meeting after tonight's will be the 4th, so we've scheduled it for that day. Here we have a slide. I just want to make sure everyone was aware of this. If you've been li listening to the governor's daily um, uh, press conferences, uh, this was something that he gave to schools as far as guiding our plans for reopening, whether that's the summer or the fall. It does look like it's going to be the fall as far as when students are allowed back on campus. We haven't gotten any specific guidance or guidelines yet. We do know that schools are gonna to have to submit some type of a plan and we've started working on that, like I said, with our emergency management team and our staff across the district. But here's six bullet points that the governor laid out for schools to consider as they're making those plans. So number one, how will we monitor the spread of COVID-19, making sure that any students that, and staff that are uh, either um, feeling symptoms or uh, possibly have been, have been um, diagnosed with COVID uh, or being separated from other folks. And uh, so that we'll make sure that we keep people safe and healthy. Number two, instill parent confidence and reinforce student safety. So we're putting measures in place, such as distancing, masking, making sure that uh, we're planning for reduced um, densities of people in our building, making sure that we have plans for cleaning and disinfecting materials on a regular basis. Third, reopening extracurricular activities cautiously. So as you know, uh, the governor has said that he is slowly opening that valve. And so as far as extracurriculars and athletics go, we will be doing that very cautiously and following the guidance of the local uh, healthcare professionals, Dr. Mendoza with the county, and of course, the guidance from the state and whatever they offer. Number four, we assess our protocols for special student populations. So this could be students with disabilities, English language learners, students in special programs, whatever that case may be, making sure that we're taking that in, into consideration as we're planning out things like scheduling, structure, those types of things making sure that we're ensuring the students' uh, mental health. And I would also say that of our staff. So we've been working very hard over this closure and just in general, uh, promoting uh, social emotional learning and also self-care. 
So we're gonna to continue to do that and provide direct supports as needed for students and staff to make sure that they continue to stay mentally healthy and well. And last, consider alternative academic calendar. So we're working on that. Uh, we will hopefully at some point be putting out some information to get your opinions and uh, your ideas around what that might look like, but we will most likely have to make some modifications to make sure that we're adhering to the proper social distance and density of our students and staff within our buildings when they do come back. So with that, I think I nailed it. I think we did this, uh, this, um, these updates under five minutes. So uh, I just wanna sign off and wish everyone a very happy Memorial Day weekend. Of course, this is a day to honor the people that we have lost. Uh, fighting for our country and protecting our freedoms. So some of you that may impact you personally, may impact your family, you may have lost loved ones in the past due to a conflict. I just wanna say thank you to them, thank you to you. I appreciate everything that they do to serve our country, to protect the liberties and the freedoms that we have. And um, I'll make sure that I, I honor those folks appropriately over the weekend. And I just wish everyone the best uh, as they enjoy uh, themselves and their families, of course, maintaining your social distance and enjoying that sun. So thank you for everything that you're doing to make sure that our students are cared for. And if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call or email me or contact your child's administrator. Thank you.